Recording your podcast remotely allows you to connect with people around the world, whether it's a co-host on the other side of the country or a guest that's particularly difficult to get. You don't have to physically go to them anymore. You can do it all on the internet. So consider this video your ultimate guide for all things remote podcast recording. And to kick things off, Jalan is gonna cover our top three software recommendations. So after the year that we had in 2020, most of us are super familiar with Zoom. So Zoom is our first recommendation. It is super budget friendly. There's a free subscription plan that gives you about 30 to 45 minutes of recording time between two people or more. It allows you to record audio as well as video right within the app onto your computer. And if you're super savvy, you can go in and ask it to record separate audio tracks. This is helpful for when you're recording and then editing, because if someone does something sneezes on their microphone while you're talking, you can go in and just cut that little piece out and you don't even miss a beat. Super helpful. We know that Skype is also a forerunner when it comes to budget-friendly and free recording software, but given its audio and video quality, we really feel that Skype is probably better used for informal conversations between you and like an aunt. So if you're trying to decide between Skype and Zoom, we definitely recommend that you go with Zoom all day long. Next up is Riverside. We really like Riverside because it provides high quality audio as well as video. Riverside allows you to record up to eight people at a time. It also boasts some really cool features like calling in, integration with social media so that you can do your live streams and it'll push it right out to platforms like YouTube and Facebook. So you can get five hours of audio as well as video recording for $19 a month with Riverside. And our third option is Squadcast. We love Squadcast. Squadcast has consistently great audio and video. They allow you to record up to four people, and they also have some really awesome features like green rooms. Um, they allow you to record your audio in separate tracks as well, and they're regularly updating their software, which we love. Squadcast offers a package of five hours of audio recording for $20 a month, and if you do their audio and video package, that's $40 a month. Thanks, Jalan. So now that you know what kind of software you can use to record remote podcasts, let's talk about audio and video quality. So Alvin and I are gonna hop into Squadcast, one of our recommended software options, and cover the basic principles that both you and your guests will need to follow in order to get high quality audio and video from a remote podcast. So Alvin, our first tip to get great audio quality out of your remote podcast recordings is to wear headphones, both you and your guest. Why is that important? If you aren't wearing headphones, you're probably using your computer mic, or some other microphone that's actually playing out loud. And if you don't wear headphones, you get something called mic bleed. And the end result is when you are editing this file, you're gonna be dealing with Travis's audio, crisp and clean, Albin's audio with kind of this background noise of you talking because that's you coming out of the speakers into the mic. Makes it a ton easier to edit, makes it a ton easier to get crisp audio, uh, makes everyone's life a lot better. So go ahead and put on a set of headphones. Yeah, headphones are one of those things everyone should have laying around. If you send your guests instructions, letting them know that they need to wear headphones before they show up to the interview, they can be prepared and that's gonna make a world of difference. And then the second thing that you wanna tell your guests to do before they show up is to find a quiet place where they can record the podcast. Now, Abin, why is that important to have a space where you're not gonna have a lot of outside interrupting noises uh, during the interview. I mean, it's almost the exact same issue that we have. Uh, Thursday is my neighbor's lawn day. We used to record on Thursdays and we moved it to Wednesdays because I'd often be doing a recording and then there's a lawnmower in the background or there's a leaf blower. And that interruption makes it that much more difficult to edit. Good preparation, good recordings make for great editing. So save yourself the time, find a quiet environment and use that for your recording. Tip number three, is to use a microphone. So your laptop comes with a microphone. Most computers, most phones have microphones built into them. They're not amazing though. They no. will work for like telephone calls, but for a podcast, you want really crisp audio. And so you'll wanna use either a microphone like Alvin and I are using, or even something like these earbuds have a little directional microphone built right into them. So. If you have a podcast microphone, make sure that you use that. Make sure your guest uses that. If they don't have a microphone, see if they can find a set of these earbuds or Bluetooth headset. Anything that has a directional microphone will be much better than their laptop microphone. One thing I've run into in the past is I keep hearing the audio 
and I'm like, wow, this sounds pretty bad, but I've got like a nice mic. Be sure that the audio input device that you're using is the microphone. If you don't have a microphone, you can get a lot better audio by being close to the mic that you're using. That's gonna give you much better sound quality and it's gonna kind of eliminate some of that echoey reverb sound. Tip number four is to make sure that you and your guest both have a strong internet connection. All of the tools that we recommended in the first part of this video use the internet in some <laughs> capacity. Albin, why is it important to have a fast, strong internet connection when doing remote podcasts? While Riverside and Squadcast are going to be doing local recordings, they're saving things to your computer, they still have to upload that video and audio uh, to the cloud for you to actually be able to access it. And if you're using Zoom, that's all got to happen in real time. So when you're picking a spot, think, yeah, it's got to be quiet. I need to have my equipment. But if you can get a really strong internet connection, maybe even hooking up to Ethernet, that is going to make your life that much easier. And then our fifth tip to get great audio quality, we actually teased a little bit earlier in this video, is to send your guest instructions ahead of time. You don't want them showing up to the interview with nothing prepared, no microphone, no headphone, not in a quiet place, not connected to strong internet. You want to have an email that you can send mm -hmm. to your guest with everything they need to know to be fully prepared to record a high quality podcast. What you don't want to do is to show up to the interview, maybe you've only got a 45 minute slot, and then spend the first 15, 20 minutes of the interview setting everything up. You want your guests to be relaxed so that you're relaxed, so that the conversation flows well. Anything you can do before you hit record to make sure they're comfortable is gonna make for a better podcast interview. So something that a lot of podcasters have started doing is recording video of their podcast and posting it to YouTube or social media to get more exposure and to grow their audience. So we also wanted to give you some tips on how to record high quality video using the remote software that we recommended in the first part of this video. And the first tip that we have for you is to make sure that you record in a well lit environment. Alvin, what does that look like and, and how would you actually do that? The way you get a crisp video is that you're getting a lot of light into the capsule of your camera. Light the room up and then it's gonna make any camera look quite a bit better. The second tip is to invest in a webcam if you plan on doing this video recording very often. So you can start with your baseline camera. A lot of computers though, they only have like a 720p. It's gonna be pretty grainy, it's not the best. The next upgrade is to maybe use your phone to actually record a video on your phone and then use that video. Then you can maybe do a web camera and as long as you're doing a really good job with lighting and making sure you're in focus, that can work well. And the ultimate level is going out and buying like an SLR camera and really setting that up. There's a couple different options. They get more expensive, the better quality camera you want to have. And we'll leave a link to several options in the video descriptions if you wanna go and see what that could look like to get a web camera for your video podcast you'll at least have some things to look through. And then Alvin just talked about, but tip number three is to actually record the video on your phone in addition to <laughs> using the software. So you can just take your cell phone and you can set it up in front of you on some books or a small tripod and just have it record the video while you're doing your interview. After you're done, you can just bring both of those video files into your editing software and you can sync them up. And then you can use the video from your camera on your phone which is gonna be a higher quality than the webcam that comes on your computer. Now, the last tip that we have, Albin, and this is really an encouragement that if you want to focus on high quality video, there are certain software that we recommend over others. So Albin, what are the software options that we recommend for people that really do care about HD video quality? Zoom will not record in HD. If you want to get 1080p or maybe even 4K, you're gonna to need to look at an option like riverside.fm or Squadcast. So if you're thinking, I'm going to put this content on YouTube, maybe chop it up into clips, then go ahead and invest in one of those two options. So now you know how to record a high quality remote podcast episode, but you still may be looking for some tips and strategies to utilize each of those software options effectively. Well, you're in luck because we actually have a playlist here on our YouTube channel where we cover how to set up those different software options. So you can click the link in the description or the image right here to my left and watch those videos next. Well, we hope you found this video helpful and until next time, keep podcasting.